two, three. One, two, three. Is that what <laughs> okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce to you to the next tool, and, uh, and, and uh, this is called a French curve. Uh, this is your best friend. Uh, you can do some amazing things with the French curve. I'm going to show you a couple of uh, uh, exercises that I want you to uh, do, and then I'm going to show you a project that I want you to work on. All right? Let's go ahead and, and get some paint in here, and I'm going to go with the blue again. Okay, here's your French curve. It's got multiple areas of circles, curves, and complex shapes. You use this by putting it down either on the paper or off the paper, depending if you want a hard or a soft edge, or a combination of them, like in a shadow. Uh, you would put down the uh, French curve like that if you wanted a hard edge to a soft edge. Let me show you what I mean by that where it is okay do you see where the air uh, the French curve was tight against the paper you've got a very sharp edge between the the, uh, the white and the blue but as I pulled the French curve away from the paper uh, the uh, the spray pattern um, is softer around the edge here so that uh, you can get hard and soft edges uh, in your uh, your painting. Very important to work with and very important to, to master. Now what we're going to do is uh, let you have some fun making shapes with this. Try it going up tight and seeing that or watch how it, how it changes the image when you do it soft. Combinations. Uh, just fill your paper with and become familiar with the French curve. French curves come with varying shapes. You can, uh, you can pretty much find the French curve exactly the way and what you want to produce any myriad of, of different objects and shapes. Okay? So go ahead, turn off the air, uh, the, uh, um, oh crap. Alright, so go ahead, turn off the video and go try this and then come on back and I'm going to show you a little project. All right? All right, for this first project, I want you to try this uh, freehand without any stencils or templates or French curves so you can tell the difference. Uh, for this, you're going to have a very soft, uh, out of focus image. All right? We're going to make an eye. And first things first, we're going to, we're going to establish uh, where the iris and the pupil is. This is just a freehand exercise, get you uh, to where you've got a little more eye-hand coordination, but also shows you the ability of the airbrush to work in a soft, almost out of focus view, uh, which is important because not everything that you see in nature is in focus. And that way you can accentuate certain areas and de-accentuate areas. Bring your eye into focus to the areas that you want and just kind of suggest it in areas that you don't. Now this one's got, uh, on a purpose kind of small. You want to keep it kind of loose. Oops. Just have some fun with it. Now notice you can bring your airbrush in closer to get some uh, darker areas. And there you go. All right. Go ahead and turn off your airbrush and give this a try. Uh, try it a couple of times. Come on back and I'll show you the next thing with using French curves and templates. All right, now we're going to do that same eye, a little bit bigger, but it's going to be sharp and in focus. And to do that, we're going to use our French curves and we're going to use our, our templates. 
first thing I'm going to do is establish once again the uh, the pupil of the eye. That's kind of my starting point. Uh, for that, I'm going to use uh, my template here, and uh, we're going to use this center one right here. I'll get this paper out. Remember, you always want to control your overspray. Overspray will kill a painting. Keep your airbrush clean, run water through it, make sure you don't skimp on your maintenance. Most of the problems with airbrushers, they occur as beginners, is the fact that they don't keep their airbrushes clean. Uh, paint uh, will uh, build up on the tip of the needle and it'll act like a cork. Sometimes it doesn't build up exactly round and sometimes it'll, it'll cause your, uh, your uh, spray pattern to veer off. So take some time and make sure that you clean your airbrush, okay? So right now I'm almost ready to do the iris. And so I'm going to have that like that. Make sure that's all down. I'm going to take my blue. And I'm going to give it a feeling around it like this. Just like that. Build your uh, paint up slowly. Make sure you work dry. Don't put a lot of paint down. Use a lot of layers. Now we're going to shift to the next shape. And make it a smaller one. Not quite dilated. All right, there. I'm going to reuse my paper. This time I want it really rather solid, except for I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight right there, and then use the skills on laying down a solid color without any striations in it. Now we'll take this off, and that gives us our first look at a uh, omelet. <laughs> now take this, take your French curve, and start to establish the uh, the eye itself. Um, let's see. Hmm. as a hard edge and I'm changing the angle careful of overspray So it'll be a little bit thicker here. I'm going to do that by putting that there, there. Let's see. Have that more rounded right there. So I'm going to lift this up so that it under spray can go up underneath it, but it still establishes a. See that, how it goes soft right there? And then 
we'll start to lay down some of the skin folds. Take this here. Now, put this eye under some shadow. I'm going to, let's see, take this like this. You just maneuver your French curve around so that uh, you get the proper angle and the shape where you want it. Get a nice fold of skin right there. This will be hand brushed right here by hand so that I have a nice soft transition going on right like that. And then let's see, we'll angle this down right here. And that gives me kind of like my upper lid. And I'm going to give it a shadow, so like it's casting a shadow over the eye itself. Like that. And then we'll pop it down. And this area will be in shadow. I'll bring that down like that. Now let's start establishing this side. There's a hard edge right here. And then, let's see. Get myself a change my French curve. curve and put the rest of the eyelid in and so I'm going to take it right about like this right here when you spray make sure you spray on the French curve all right so that what that does is it enables it to control where you put the paint I'm not painting on the board. I'm painting on the French curve and letting the overspray do most of the work. Okay. Let's see. I want to establish the underside of this eyelid. You see how by using the French curve and the templates you can start to get some really intricate shapes going on, molding it uh, so that it's three-dimensional. You've got the eyeball here, you have the shadow, um, uh, you've got the eyelid up underneath, and uh, it, it looks like there's folds of skin by using hard and soft edges. Now let's go ahead and uh, um, put the rest of the eye in. Thank <laughs> you. 
Nejakým som. Simulate an eyebrow. Now, there's some things I want to show you on it to, to really make that pop out because your airbrush is just a tool. There's, you can use many tools, not just exclusively be an airbrush. We're going to give us uh, some eyelashes. And do that, and you just come back in and you take your, your paintbrush and drag it. change colors and we're going to put a little white to make the highlight stand out. Change my color here. Make sure all the blue is out of your brush before you put your white in. All right. To this kind of a weak highlight right there. You build your highlight slowly, let it dry back. White has a tendency of coming down a little wet. There you go. Highlight. Now turn it off. Give this a try. Try it a couple of times. Come on back and uh, I'll show you the next uh, technique. Alright, now we'll have some fun. I'm going to introduce to you the color uh, uh, portion of the uh, basic airbrushing. Do that. I'm going to teach you how to airbrush by just using three colors at first. So I'm going to teach you how to mix colors on the paper and how to mix colors in your